Hello there everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Dose of Drupal. As always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter, at smthomas3, or you can go to codekarate.com and sign up for the newsletter, which I encourage you to do if you have not already. I will be releasing another issue here in the next few days. So, today we're going to talk about the AJAX framework in Drupal 7. The documentation is listed here from api.drupal.org and it it talks about how you can use ajax the ajax framework to help you more easily make ajax calls to your drupal website and this is for drupal 7 so it's relatively new in drupal 7 or it's quite a bit different than drupal 6 uh, i found a lot of examples on how to use ajax within a form however there was not just a simple straightforward example for how to use it with other types of HTML. So I wanted to create a simple example of how to use Ajax with just a simple link. Basically you click a link, it makes an Ajax call out to the server, does a little bit of processing and sends you back something to put on your HTML page or your Drupal page. So a few days ago, and this is episode 54, that will be coming out shortly, but a few days ago I created a blog post called Drupal 7 JavaScript Ajax Framework Example from a link. And this is basically what I'm going to be going over today, but I wanted to put it in a video format so I could explain it a little bit better and show a demo. But all the code is there, so you can definitely take a look and use that code if you don't want to follow along with this video. But this video is going to show you how it works and walk through how the code is actually doing what it's doing. So here's my example. It's just a very simple page. All it does is it, when you click this link, it goes out to the server. It returns the current time, as you can see. After a little bit, it goes away, and it replaces the link back again. So you can click it, you can notice the time has changed. It'll go away in a few seconds. And basically what that's doing is it's just making a very simple AJAX call out to the server. It's returning a response and then it's doing some processing. You can go ahead and take a look at the network tab here and you can see it's making a call to AJAX slash my AJAX test or my AJAX test slash AJAX actually. If you hover over this link you'll look down here you notice it's making a call to my dash AJAX dash test slash node.js. So what this does is when you click this link, it actually replaces the Node.js portion of this path. You can notice if I click open this in a new window, it actually gives me a formatted page. It, notice the title is different, where I, it has Node.js in the URL. But if you do, if you use the AJAX format, which when you click this link, the JavaScript replaces this Node.js with AJAX it gives you a different result. You'll notice it's JSON data and then that will get processed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code and see how it's doing that and what it's doing and how it works. Go ahead and start. It's a very simple module. It's called Ajax Link. It has three files. The first one is ajaxlink.info which is just your simple Drupal 7 module info file. You'll notice it does include a scripts file for ajax underscore link dot js. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ajax link dot module file. It's only about 79 lines, so it's not too long. The first is it implements hook menu. And the first item in the hook menu is just ajax dash test, and this is just our ajax dash test page. All it has in this page is just a Ajax link. So it calls this Ajax link page callback, which this returns a renderable array, which if you're not sure what a renderable array is, look at some of my previous Daily Dose of Drupal videos. I talk about them briefly. And it returns a, basically what, this, what happens is this gets rendered and created into a link. So it's a type of link. The title is Ajax link which is the title right here. 
the href, which is what you see when you hover over it, is my dash ajax dash test slash node.js, which you can see down here. Uh, I also add a prefix and a suffix onto this. And you'll notice I wrap the link inside an ajax dash link div, but I also put a div after this. And it's just set up to be empty. So if I look at this, you'll notice, let me go ahead and refresh this page. There's a link right here, ajax-display. So I have my ajax-link div, which wraps this link. And I also have this ajax-display div, which is empty right now. You'll notice when I click on the link, this ajax-display gets the data that's passed back from the server, and it gets put inside that div. So that's all put into the prefix and suffix. The, I mean, this is very, renderable arrays are somewhat similar to form arrays, if you're familiar with Drupal 6 form arrays. The important part is this part right here, this Ajax property of this array. All it's telling it to do is use Ajax, which is going to make sure it switches this Node.js to Ajax when it makes the Ajax call. I'm using an effect fade. You can look inside the Ajax framework documentation for a whole bunch of other options for what you can do with this. A lot of these are used within Drupal forms, like I said, so they're not all needed. And this was basically what I could strip it down to and still have it work. Now let's look at this other menu item, my-ajax-test. You'll notice there's a percent sign here. And this is so it can take that argument. Either it's going to be Node.js or it's going to be slash Ajax. So it's going to pass in that page argument to this Ajax link callback function, which if we go down here, you'll notice I have the function and I just pass a variable that gets called in. This is either going to be set to, like I said, Node.js or Ajax, and it's going to be a string. So the first thing I do, and this is where you do any of your database queries, your processing, anything like that, I just go ahead and get the current time using the PHP date function. Then I do a if statement. I, ba I basically say if it's Ajax that was passed in here, I'm going to run some Ajax commands. Otherwise, I'm just going to return a renderable array with the markup of this time variable that we previously created. So let's look at this Ajax piece and unpack it a little bit. I basically set up a commands array. I run one command that's going to do a replace. So it's going to look for this ID of Ajax-display. It's going to replace that entire div with this HTML right here. So this is going to be a div with the same ID, but it's going to have this time variable that I created up above. The second one we're going to do is this Ajax command changed. That is going to just mark this Ajax dash display with a changed indicator. And I'll show you what that does here in a second. So we'll go ahead and take a look. You'll notice when I come to the page originally, and I go to Ajax link, you'll notice there's just div ID Ajax dash display. As soon as I click that, you'll notice that there's a new class added, Ajax-Changed. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to react on items that have actually been changed. Now, what I also needed to do is I needed to run some JavaScript after this Ajax call went through. And the easiest way I could find to do that was to create a very simple jQuery plugin. So what this does is it calls Ajax command invoke, and it calls my jQuery plugin, which I'll show you in a second, that's just called Ajax link, and it executes that code. And then what it does is it wraps it all into a renderable array type format and returns it using this Ajax deliver function. And that's how it works. Let's go ahead and look at the JavaScript, 
which is just a few simple lines of code. Basically this right here creates a new jQuery plugin called Ajax underscore link. All this does is it hides this Ajax dat dash link div which is a wrapper around this link so you can see it hides it that's why it goes away uh, the JavaScript or the Ajax from here these two line or this line specifically is what adds this to the page and then in the JavaScript I proceed to set a timeout of five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds which basically will fade out this Ajax dash display set the HTML to nothing so it'll get rid of the contents and then it'll reshow it so it's there for the next time then I'll also fade in this Ajax link so it comes back and that's all there is to it to making this happen see it disappears this is going to fade out and then be removed and it's gonna fade this one back in very simple took me a while to figure it out and get it working because like I said there weren't there wasn't a lot of examples of Ajax uh, using the Ajax framework for simple links and there are probably multiple ways to do this this is just one way you can o you can always add just a use dash Ajax class to a link and it will start using Ajax there's a whole bunch of different things you can read up on on the Ajax framework I just wanted to show you one example and explain how it worked so you can start using Ajax in your own modules and on your own Drupal 7 websites. That's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. Check back in again for another exciting episode, and we'll be back again soon. Thanks for watching.